Hello and welcome to Season 4 of Smart Money, brought to you by PPS Investments. I'm Alicia Sekham and joining me now is Sean Reuters, who's PPS Investments Chief Executive. Just a side note, only the second chief exec in its 16-year history. And we're going to cast a bit of a spotlight on purposeful investing. Sean, good to have you with us. But I think before we get into that, we need a bit of an overview here. PPS Investments forms, of course, part of the broader PPS group and as a mutual is quite different from a traditional shareholder based company. So let's start off with what that means and how it moves you beyond being a traditional business. Hello, Alicia. Lovely to meet you as well. And uh, welcome to you, to your listeners as well. Really great to be on the show. Um, PBS itself as a mutual, look, it's got a very rich history. We've been around for 80 years, started by professionals for professionals. Um, and we still serve the financial well-being of the doctors, the nurses, the dentists, the engineers, the teachers, and the many more professionals of the country. Conceptually, what's different about the mutual is actually the concept of mutuality. Uh, you know, in, in, in globally, there's, there's many mutuals in the States and parts of Europe. Um, you actually have uh, mutuals to the tune of about 40 to 60 percent of the total market share. Um, and, and really what makes us different is the fact that, you know, from a shareholder point of view, shareholder businesses serve the shareholder itself, which has a profit incentive. We serve our membership base itself um, and, and we think that we serve their best interest and we think that that is mutually successful. So if I can use a simple example, in 2020, uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, you know, our insurance payouts had 20% of the claims was actually for quarantining and exp uh, exposure, meaning those uh, members or, or clients weren't, weren't necessarily, they didn't necessarily have COVID, but they were, or at least they weren't tested, but we covered them anyway, purely because we think it was in their best interest. Um, and from that point of view, we know that, you know, shareholder businesses may not be able to do so, given that it's a profit mode instead of, uh, let's call it a purposeful mode. So for us, it's all rooted in purpose, empowering graduate professionals to live the lives they want to live. And in so doing, uh, you know, really empowering South Africa. Yeah, you've kind of alluded to the, uh, to how your clients differ from those of other financial institutions, right, in that they are all professionals. But that together with what you stand for, how does that all then spell a different approach in terms of, uh, you know, how you're doing business? Yeah, it's a great question, Risha. Look, on, on face value and, and from the outside in, our clients could look uh, exactly the same. I think you know, even the concept itself, we call our clients members and, and, and not, uh, not clients in a sense. Um, and having analyzed professionals for, for decades, we know they're different. Um, firstly, many of them are self-employed. They require unique value propositions to assist with growing the practices themselves, protecting their livelihoods and securing the futures of themselves and their families. We believe in understanding their unique attributes and ingraining this in how we serve them. We can better answer for their specific needs. Um, if I use a simple investment-based example, on average, um, our members tend to live about 15 years longer than the average South African, which actually poses quite a significant financial planning conundrum. Um, you know, you ultimately need either more capital or repress you or change your lifestyle in a sense. So for us, um, you know, and, and given the fact that many of our clients or our members are now um, at retirement age, we have to start thinking differently even about retirement solutions. Now, first and foremost, being a mutual and paying out profits to our, our members, that in itself vests at retirement, which means there's an extra pot of cash um, for, for, for members to actually utilize in retirement. Um, and outside of that, we're looking at different ways of building product solutions and investment solutions to answer for that longevity risk. We can only do so by understanding them and understanding graduate professionals and being engrossed in their purpose as well. Yeah. And what that does is speak to then broader impact on society, right? So let's just delve into a bit more detail on that in terms of PPS and mutuality and the kind of broader impact it has on society as you see it. Yeah, Alicia, look, for, for me, you know, even, even just working for PPS investments, it's, it's more of a calling than it is just a job, right? And I think for us, 
Um, you know, whether you're making profits, whether you are offering an investment return for an, uh, for your member or your investor, you have to at the same time, you know, if, if success is best shared, then you have to think about the societal impact as well. Um, and that for us starts with our foundation. Um, we believe that, you know, through education and, and specifically at times targeting healthcare as well, um, you know, we can offer um, building and cultivating future professionals as well. Um, and our foundation does quite a bit of that. First and foremost, we, we look at the, the grassroots level of, of grade 11 and, and helping with mentorship there and, and building um, past um, schooling as well. Uh, we then offer um, actual bursaries. And last year, we, we had 19 bursaries given throughout different faculties as well. Um, and then as people or, or future professionals get closer to the working environment, uh, via the LEAP program, we actually assist them with uh, work um, life experience as well. We, we actually helped 1,500 um, future, future professionals with, uh, with um, helping them you know, get the job and, and building out their, their CVs, et cetera, as well. And, and, and look, for us, that's fundamental. Um, if, you, if you understand um, your, your place in society in South Africa and, and the fact that you know, it has to be something bigger than just, you know, making profit. Um, then, you, then you'd understand that building the, uh, the South African future graduate professionals that ultimately will serve the country is something that we need to do. So vast, it's a triple threat. You have to think about purpose. You have to think about profit and you have to think about shared success around that. Which was, you know, going to be the next question I asked you. Can you really or realistically speaking actually achieve the best of both, you know, both strong financial returns and positive societal impact? Or are you having to compromise a bit on the one end to achieve greater good on the other? Yeah, we, we get that question quite often, Alicia. And I think for us... Um, I think there's there's three components. I mean, on investment returns, and it's it's quite fitting that our interview is is when it is, or our discussion is when it is. Um, we were nominated for the Raging Bull Award for the best risk adjusted balance fund over a five year period with the PPS Managed Fund um, last uh, last week. Um, and again, it's testament to the fact that you know, given a mutual is a business that thinks about the long term and intergenerational wealth. We can partner with asset managers that have that long-term view as well. And, and, and the returns we offer our clients has been um, really good um, and consistent for that matter. From a business stance, um, and, you know, us being a business that, you know, there's no shareholder. The, if, if the client or the member buys us, it's buying the, the business product along with buying the profitability or, or the business itself. Um, so the profits that we generated last year and we distributed, or sorry, in 2022 that we distributed to members uh, was in the tune of 620 million rand. And over the last 10 years, we've distributed 32 billion rand um, to, to our membership base. Um, so we think from a, a returns and profit, it's definitely there. But as I just mentioned to you, um, we, you know, we, are, we are in a fortunate um situation where our members, the doctors of this country, the dentists of this country, actually allow us to, to actually reinvest in the future of this country uh, through cultivating tomorrow's professionals. So, so for us, yes, definitely you can do it all. Um, uh, we, we definitely think societal impact along with um, purpose can be driven. And, and I mean, Alicia, maybe the one thing to, to mention also, what we are starting to think about given our 40-year time horizon for, for investments, is how to actually bring impact into the investment strategy as well. Why not look to, to invest in education or private equity that can help the country as well? And I guess this, you know, speaking to uh, how empowering graduate professionals resonates with you as well, you've got the strong personal connection to PPS's um, you know, purpose that you highlighted uh, at the top of the interview as well. So as we wrap this conversation up then, Sean, what would your call to action be for our viewers? Yeah, I think, Alicia, the call to action uh, has to be, uh, you know, let's, let's all as South Africa seem, uh, try to build out this concept of mutuality. Why can't our success be shared? I'd, I'd like to challenge everybody to, to basically say, look, in the spirit of Ubuntu, when you think about, you know, building your own success, why can't you do so in building others as well and, and, and trying to, to ultimately benefit um, 
South African humanity in general as well. So, so really in the spirit of mutuality uh, to build shared success. Well, Sean, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for having joined us today. Sean Reuters is CEO of PPS Investments. 